Hello, everyone. I'm Christine Chen, and welcome to SLM Live, where we chat with change agents and swim deep waters in our exploration of human potential. I'm so pleased today to have a very special guest. We're going to swim some deep waters with your voice today. Our guest is Dr. Shamini Jain. She's the CEO of Chi, the Consciousness and Healing Initiative. She's also the Assistant Professor of Psychiatry at UC San Diego. You might have caught her work on Time, CNN, or TEDx. So we're so pleased to have her on Esalen Live today. Welcome, Dr. Jane or Shamini. How are you? I'm great, Christine. It's great to be here with you. Thanks for joining us. I know that you had a workshop at Esalen that got canceled due to COVID. Tell us um, how you're feeling about some of the things that are happening and how are you doing? I'm doing good, you know, actually quite good. I think for many of us, it's been a time to slow down, reflect, reprioritize, be really grateful for the things that we have, you know, including our health, our relationships, um, you know, all of it. So, you know, I hold that at the same time as holding, you know, the understanding that a lot of people are really um, experiencing a great deal of suffering at the same time, right? So it's it's kind of this very interesting observation of how we can hold so many realities at once, right? Both the suffering that we're, you know, kind of in collectively, um, as well as individually, and also the opportunities to connect with bliss in a way that isn't spiritual bypass, but actually kind of our birthright of consciousness. So, you know, I feel like this time, as many have called it, the great pause, you know, it really is that. It's a time for us to just sort of step back and see the larger picture of, who we are as a human species and where we want to go. What was your workshop going to be in September before we had to cancel it due to all the things that are happening? I believe that one was called the well of being, which, you know, is really appropriate for our times as well, because it was really about how do we foster well-being from the inside out, right? And so as a scientist who's been studying the areas of healing for many decades, both from, you know, the field of psychoneuroimmunology and what we call biofield science, the study of energy and information as it, you know, applies to our health and our healing. We understand now very deeply, whether we're talking about placebo studies, biofield science studies, holistic healing, that our well-being stems from our well of being. And so the workshop is really about synthesizing both the scientific and spiritual perspectives with really fun practices, right? Mm -hmm. That can help us reunite with that inner core of our being that stimulates our healing and the healing of others. So much of the healing I know that you speak about is through the voice. And that's one of the reasons that we're here today. Why is it important to own our own voices, know our own voices, be able to find them during these times that are so challenging? It's a great question, Christine. And, you know, truly everyone says, you know, I need to speak my truth. I need to, you know, kind of hold my own voice, my authenticity. And much of that is true. And we're seeing kind of the beginnings, I'd say, of that in a way with everyone sort of sharing their viewpoints, their perspectives. And sometimes we see what seems to be divisiveness, you know, when people are sharing, well, I think very differently than you. So that's part of it is kind of finding our way of expressing what we think and what we feel. But there's an even deeper layer to all of this. And it's really what brought me into the study of, of biofield science, of energy and information was being a singer and understanding, you know, kind of on an experiential level, what sages across the world have said um, for millennia, right? In different spiritual traditions, which is the world is sound and we are the world. So whether it was in the beginning, the word was God, you know, and God was the word or Nada Brahma, the world is sound, we have these amazing abilities to connect with different aspects of consciousness and broaden our perspectives and broaden our experience of consciousness simply by connecting with our own sound making through the voice. Mm -hmm. And we all have this gift, you know, I, I work a lot with different people who some are, you know, singers and performers like myself and others feel like they can't carry a tune. And sometimes we're shut off. I mean, it really starts early in childhood where people are taught like, oh, I can't sing, I can't carry a tune. And that's a little sad to me because when we study, of course, some of the ancient tantric scriptures and other scriptures, we understand that we all have this fundamental, you can say, right 
to connect with our own voice for our healing and you know to connect really with the divine through the voice if we choose mm -hmm. What exactly, I relate to that so much because I was told at a young age too that, oh, you don't have a good voice, you can't sing. And it, many years later through Suzanne Sterling, I found my voice and was able to just start vocalizing and that healed so many things. What is happening on a scientific and energetic level when you start to vocalize, when you start to maybe not even sing, but just speak your truth? What exactly is happening that's so healing? There, I mean, there's so much to that question. It's amazing. I'll just, I do want to share a couple of studies that have recently come out just on the actual devotional singing and even, you know, the group singing process, a couple of cutting edge studies that were recently published. Um, you know, one was a very well controlled study done at UC San Francisco that showed that just six weeks of devotional singing, and I believe this was in the Kirtan tradition compared to a relaxation group you know, where people were just listening to music, actually, um, actually influenced our cell aging um, in, in terms of the telomerase levels that, you know, were in the body. So telomerase is an enzyme that's associated with cell aging, pretty profound biological effects. And then another recent study actually demonstrated that singing together, whether you were a novice or a professional, just simply getting in a group and vocalizing together, very simple, simple things. Um, seem to result in people's brain waves actually, or sorry, their heart waves actually connecting. So there was a, a heart coherence that was actually measurable for people in a group when they were vocalizing together. And of course, for anyone who's gone to a concert or something like that, you know, this is, this is a very felt experience, right? We're all sort of like uh, in this undulating wave of bliss often when we go to and we sing together and we're sort of all in it together and i know that's one of the things that many of us miss about this time is you know we're not having live concerts and things like that and yet we have these beautiful virtual platforms right where we can vocalize together and we can use sound in our bodies and that seems to affect our hormones it seems to affect you know even downstream things like immune function Right. And it certainly affects just in real time our physiology, our heart rates and our brain waves. Mm -hmm. So it's instantaneous sonic healing. Shamini, sometimes when I would lead um, a mini kirtan or even chants in my own yoga classes and someone would feel self-conscious about vocalizing, I would liken it to a concert saying, like, you know how you're at a concert and you feel like you are all on the same page all at once and you don't even know the person next to you or in the row in front of you back when we can go to concerts. Is there something to some people feeling more comfortable vocalizing, sharing their voice, sharing their story than others? And how does that map to personal healing? I know that's a big question. No, it's a great question because it's all based on our conditioning, you know? I think, and whether we want to talk about conditioning in this life or past lives or whatever, there's some of us, I think that were given opportunities or maybe even forced into opportunities, you know, just as a joke, I will share with you, like, you know, I'm from an Indian family, right? Born and raised here in the U.S., but from an East Indian family. And, you know, Indians kind of expect their kids to perform. So I remember being four years old and, you know, my mom kind of shoving me and my brother out on the stage at a Diwali function with like a thousand people. And we just had to entertain them, right? So, you know, so that's are kind of pretty. Girl, I had to do the Chinese lantern dance, so I right? got it. <laughs> you know, right? And if you don't do it, it'll feel good. Guilt, guilt. So you know, we have that. And then we have others that were just like completely shut down because maybe they're singing around the house and, you know, a parent or a sibling was like, oh, God, stop. You sound awful. So when we get together in a group, we realize it's about the collective. Right. And really, truly, as a performer, every performer knows this. It's not about you. Right. It's, it's about the group vibe. Your job as a performer, even or as a kirtan leader or whatever, is to get everyone in resonance. Right. And in harmony and synchrony. So when we get together, it's it's about the group mind. It's about the group voice. I mean, some of my most favorite times in my life have been when I've thrown that microphone out and, you know, and had people singing to me, you know, because that's really and I can see the joy in their faces. So the wonderful thing is, even though we can't do those kinds of massive concerts right now, what I have found during COVID time is that by simply working with my voice every day, you know, even just for fun, whether it's just singing a song I like or, you know, doing some devotional singing or even just chanting, right, or vocalizing, I can begin to 
realize that sense of harmony and bliss that I can feel even in a concert with thousands of people. I hear you so loud and clear. And I think we'd love to experience something that you call the sound Shakti liberation. Would you guide us through that? You bet. So, you know, just again, some background here. Why do we call it sound Shakti liberation? In Tantric tradition and Vedic tradition and other traditions, as I mentioned, sound is revered as, you know, sometimes even considered a fundamental aspect of our consciousness. And mantras, for example, are ways to connect with certain expressions of consciousness. So the mantras that we might chant, for example, in Vedic and Tantric traditions, actually relate to qualities of consciousness, which are sometimes described as lunar or solar or watery or fiery, right? Because we are that. We are all of those aspects of consciousness in form. So when we utilize these sacred sounds, we're actually connecting with those aspects of consciousness and bringing them more deeply into ourselves. So there are actually mantras, for example, that are considered to be more fiery and we can feel the energetic heat in the body that's generated when we do them. And the same with watery mantras. It's a very, very deep science, which I am happy, well, I'm not happy to say, but I, you know, I will say candidly as a scientist, we've barely scratched the surface of our understanding of these, you know, these ancient mantras. So Shakti then is the expression of consciousness in sound. So sound Shakti liberation is really about freeing our inner voice through making sounds and kind of being really free about it in the beginning. So we start with sort of freeing the voice, just making sound, clearing the pipes, if you will, and we'll do a little exercise first for that. And then if we have some time, we'll do what I call the next step, which is toning, right? And just really vocalizing a single tone in the body, feeling the resonance in the bodies and the different harmonics, and then opening really and inviting grace through mantra practice. So, you know, these are the steps. So the first step is a warm up. And I also want to say, if you're watching this on Facebook Live and you have some questions, please ask them in the chat. I'll try and incorporate them. And then also join us as Shamini leads us in this first stage, which is like the warm up. So I'll just listen in and participate on this end and mute my mic so that your mic can sing. Yes, that would be great. I'm going to invite everybody to do this with me. This is not a spectator thing. This is really for you to kind of, you know, loosen your loosen your voice up and, you know, loosen your energy and kind of get it flowing. So the first thing is just a basic siren. This is often used um, in vocal lessons and performance. So just open the voice. One key. You do not have to do this loudly. You know, I my voice might sound a little strong. You don't have to do it loudly at all. But when you're doing this, just imagine that you're very, you're like a tree, okay? So get yourself really grounded, feel your feet on the earth. If you're sitting, great. If you can stand, even better for this one, okay? You can even consider squatting and coming back up as you make the sound. Just feel free to move the any back any way that feels right to you as you make the siren. And it's basically just like this. Bounce up and down, you know, just kind of shake around, shake it out. You do a couple of those and you'll feel the energy moving through your body pretty strongly. You'll feel clearing. I'm going to invite you to do it again. Okay, with me one more time, and I really want you to just go for it. Don't strain your voice at all. Just allow the sound to come through your body, up and out the body. Okay, here we go. Okay, so how does that feel? I'd love to hear some comments. What did you think about that, Christine? Well, Mel says, beautiful, great topic. I'm so happy to be here. And Robert said, that was good. I would say, yeah, that was good. It surprised me. The volume, was that one of the heat ones that you were talking about? Or that, I thought that was the warm up. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the warm up, but it does kind of generate heat in the body because there is kind of a force to it, right? We're using a lot of air. And we're using a lot of energy to kind of move the sound all the way out the body, out the energy field. 
right? So we're just loosening. And sometimes with release, this is kind of a releasing exercise. With release, we can generate a lot of heat, mm. right? Okay, so then what's next? This is exciting. Okay, <laughs> so the next is really easy. This is just toning. And I like to do this kind of in three parts initially. And, you know, for those of you who kind of enjoy this exercise, I'll invite you to explore it beyond just the one, two, three, and just explore a sound in your body. But we use a seed mantra that is pretty much universal. It is universal, of course, and it's pretty much universally known at this point, which is OM. Okay, so we, I call this one OM in the body. And we can think about this as a toning exercise. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna focus first on chanting OM, but we're really going to embody it. So most of us are familiar with this. Right, we've chanted oh, maybe in yoga classes or in meditation. Here we're gonna focus the sound in the navel and have it really run down the body. So I really want you to direct your sound into your navel, down the feet, down your legs, and into the earth. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a super low sound. You don't again, you're not straining yourself at all, but you're really gonna to try to resonate in your lower body. Okay, so let's do that together. Om. We'll do this three times. Focus on the energy in your lower body. Noticing any subtle sensations. And then if you feel you've been holding, then just allow yourself to release. Relax your muscles. Now, one thing we'll notice as we do these exercises is that we'll feel resonance more strongly in certain areas of the body. And that's natural. Most of us aren't 100% balanced all the time in all aspects of our body, so that's fine. And, you know, our voices are different too, right? Some are higher, some are lower. For me, the lower resonance is always the hardest. So now we'll move to the middle part of the body. So here we're going to really focus the sound in the heart and the lungs. And, you know, it's almost kind of like a, ah, right? So we're really just going to ohm here in the middle body. We can even open our arms if that feels good, like we have wings. And we'll do this three times as well. to rest in Anjali Mudra, if that's comfortable. And feeling this beautiful expansion of the heart and your energy in this area. You can then relax. If you had your eyes open or closed, you can open them. And then we'll finish this particular exercise with Om to the Divine. 
you know, we could probably feel maybe some expansion here as we did the heart. And now this is kind of fun. It's a little different um, maybe for, for folks that haven't experienced this before. I'll encourage you to almost make what sounds like an outer space sound. So here we're just working with playing with the upper harmonics in the voice. So again, you're not straining and you may hear upper harmonics um, or you may not, it doesn't matter if you're interested. So this is what, you know, some people have, um, many cultures, I should say, um, have, you know, made a, a big, deep spiritual science with overtone chanting, right? So this is kind of working with overtones here to open the crown and open the head. So if you're interested in trying to hear your own overtones, you can curve your ears kind of like this. And if you do that right now while you're talking, if you mute yourself and just say, hello, hello, you'll, you'll hear that you kind of sound like you're in an echo chamber, right? You can just try it for a second. Okay, so now you're gonna do ohm and try to really focus the sound almost like in the middle of the head, in the nose. So you're making it kind of nasally. So it sounds kind of like this. Two more times. Just relax. See if you notice any difference behind the eyes, around the top of the head, as you tone in this way. So these are all just, you know, fun exercises to play with to sort of tone the sound in the body. And that gets us ready for just mantra. When, and I know we're a bit short on time. But we'll just do one quick mantra for Saraswati Ma, who is the goddess of sound and of knowledge, um, of music, of art. So here's where we're, you know, really ready to open to our devotional practice now. We've released, we've toned, and we're ready to connect. And this is Saraswati Ma right behind me. So how perfect is that? So we'll do a very simple mantra, which some of you may know, which is simply Om, Aim, Saraswati, Namaha which is just, I give reverence to the goddess of sound. We'll do this three times. Om Aim Saraswati Namaha May the creative force of eternal sound be with us always in our healing journey. That was so lovely. Thank you, Dr. Shalini Jane. Question as we come out of that, I feel so calm and <laughs> I feel so good right now. Thank you. As we come out of this, can anyone do this? I know there's there's a lot of sensitivity around cultural appropriation, spiritual bypassing. Like, what would you say to those of us who who resonate with some of these practices but are not from the culture from which they were born? Yeah, I appreciate that question very much. So, you know, I think that the teachings are universal, right? So finding a teacher is, you know, is really great and important. So finding a teacher that you really resonate with, that you can learn with and you know, from those ancient perspectives, you know, going and like saying, taking a week weekend workshop or something and then going and trying to teach it. Yeah, that would be a problem. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> allow yourself to, you know, to really dive into the teachings and explore them um, and, you know, really utilize them for your own self healing. So absolutely, these mantras are available to all of us. Our voice is available to all of us. And look, this is just one tradition. It's obviously the one that, you know, I was raised in. There are many, you know, it, Christianity is all about making a joyful noise. I mean, I, I actually loved, absolutely love singing Christmas hymns, you know, the, the feeling of bliss and devotion that you can get from singing from any spiritual tradition is amazing and each have their own magic. So I would say, you know, go with what resonates and then just study with respect, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you know, just make sure you're not out there say, trying to, yeah. <laughs> right, I was just saying respect and sincerity, that seems like the nut of what you're trying to say is just honor the practice yeah. and just do it justice and, and be really sincere about how you approach it. It sounds like that's what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, really, you hit the nail on the head, really, Christine, because it's all about the practice. And my students have said, you know, I don't feel like I'm diving into someone else's culture. I feel like I'm liberating my own shakti. That's mm -hmm. the point. You're liberating your own energy with sound, whether you choose to sing folk or heavy metal or devotional music or, you know, whatever it is, just getting comfortable with your own voice and utilizing that, you know, in your body, connecting with your energy field is the first step. This has been such a pleasure, Dr. Shamini Jane, CEO of Chi, the Consciousness and Healing Initiative. I know that your workshop was canceled due to COVID and we can't wait to have you on property and hopefully work with you on some more digital offerings coming up in the future. But we thank you so much for your generosity during this time this afternoon. It's so super healing. Robert and Miriam and Marge just chimed in and said thank you so much with all their gratitude on this week. Oh, well, thank you so much, Christine. It's my pleasure and honor. And um, everyone, take care. <laughs>